Hello YouTube, this is Painter for Hire 1975 with you. This is part 5 of how to paint a resin bust. Okay, now we're ready for our oil wash. Um, anytime that you are going to do a wash or use pastels, it's always good to dull coat the piece. So after I have dull coated and let it dry, I have mixed an oil wash using uh, turpenoid uh, and artist oil. All you want to do is, before, just like before, you want to stain the piece. You just want to stain it. You don't want to go overboard. If you get any on the skin, don't worry. Just wipe it away with a cotton swab. Uh, went to the store today, got some new cotton swabs. And you could also blot it just like you did before. But in most cases, using it on the hair, you want it to dry. Uh, you don't really care. You don't care if it's too wet. You just don't want it to be like running water. You just want to, you want to be in control of your wash. Now the purpose of this is uh, it's going to create even more shadows than it would if you were just to leave it alone. Um, but in, like I said, in some cases, it, you know, it does look good and you just want to leave it alone. Okay, now if you can see, I've got some on his neck. So all I'm doing is I'm using a cotton swab and just wiping it away. No disaster. Perfect. It's always good it's always good to sometimes try to get a little bit more paint on your brush when you're doing the hair because you want it to be a little darker. Now, what you would do in some cases, you would basically take and you would use the this method on you could use this method on anything but what you want to do is you want to get your brush and you kind of want to push it down and kind of force it to go down in those recessed areas because one thing about oils is and washes in general when you use a wash it it doesn't always you know adhere you it doesn't always show up real good so sometimes you got to give it a you know a couple good coats to do it just like you know if you were going to paint a base tone but with hair it's always good to try and get it in the crevices um a lot of people will airbrush hair on on larger scale busts and i i'm just gonna you know go out and say you know i really think the hair comes out more naturally if you paint it by hand because you're able to one thing by painting by hand is you get brush strokes and in most cases you don't want brush strokes like I said you gotta make sure you I got some more on the skin but like I said wipe it away with a cotton swab and that's the point that is that is the main reason that you that you dull coat the piece. You want to make sure you have your piece dull coated. Um, okay. Now back to what I was saying. Uh, you want to get the the hair. You want to get the hair really um, paint it well with your first base tone. Like I said, some people prefer to use an airbrush when painting hair. Um, you can, but you don't want brush strokes when you're painting skin, but in hair it is okay to have brush strokes and in some cases when the hair is not sculpted very well or doesn't have as much detail in it, 
brush strokes are a they're kind of a blessing because what it does is it it makes the hair look more defined than it actually is so like I said it doesn't really matter if uh, you get brush strokes in your hair and like I said I always no matter what scale the piece is I always paint my paint the hair I will always paint the hair with a uh, will always paint the hair with a uh, with a actual by hand paint. I'll always paint it with a brush, never airbrush. Now, uh, another thing you can do is sometimes you'll notice that when you use your wash, it might get into your crevices. All you need to do is take a a, a clean brush and just nice and neatly. brush away and just kind of like mop up where the wash has seeped into the, the crevices. In some cases you want it to seep, but in some cases you don't. Right now I, you don't want no black wash on your skin that, you know, that we've worked so hard on. Like I said, that is the key. That's why you definitely dull coat pieces so you can, in between each step, always dull coat. That way you can clean up mistakes that you make. Because no re resin kit is ever perfect. It will never be perfect, ever. You, there will be mistakes that you make. So don't get discouraged. Okay, now after our oil wash has dried, um, what you can do is go back in with your original color you used for your highlights. Uh, I used this lighter shade of brown. And just gently, light, very lightly, just go over the recessed areas, not recessed, but the raised areas of where you had put the wash. Now what this is doing, this is still lightening it up, but it's not, it's giving it just a hint more highlights than it once had before. It's kind of hard to see in the video, uh, but if you when you see it in person, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you, you know, already paint figures, um, you, you already know know this. Um, this video is really for anybody. I mean, you know, even if you've been painting figures longer than me, you know, you may be able to pick up some information that you did not know. Or, you know, maybe you already know it, but this basically is just to try and get more people into figure painting. Um, every time I go to contests, I get, the one question I get asked the most is, how do you uh, get your skin tones? Well, I've already pretty much shown you that. I also get asked about how I do eyes, and we will cover eyes in another installment here pretty soon. Now, as you can see, I'm going to move the camera so you can see. As you can see that it's now very the the skin tones and everything is looking, you know, good. It has something to contrast against. This is kind of like what I was talking about. It's almost kind of weird how it happens. It's kind of hard to explain. But it's like the skin tones. It's like they, uh... It's, it's like when you start doing a, a brush, the dry brushing, and start painting different areas. It, it's funny. It's almost like the skin tones change. But it's basically your eyes adjusting to another color. And this is just something that happens and that's pretty much it for uh, this installment uh, once again this is painter for hire 1975 if you guys have any questions feel free to contact me feel free to leave any posts um, I will 
I'm very good at getting back to people, so I will answer as best as I can. I will see you guys for part six.